Great morning, great morning. Welcome once again to Searching the Scriptures, giving God the glory, honor, and praise for his uh, bread. Uh, he gives us our daily bread, which is the word of God. And this is Searching the Scriptures, John 5, 39. The Bible says, search the scriptures in them. We think we have eternal life, but they are they which do testify of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today we're going to talk a little bit about God reversing some things. And at, uh, at the midnight hour, God is reversing some things. And so we're going to take our, um, after we pray, we're going to Romans. And then we're going to go into talk a little bit about um, the Passover and talk about the virgins. Uh, and all this is happening at midnight and how God reverses things. Uh, how God, who is the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is, uh, as I was listening to um, Cece Wine, and she was talking about um, you believing for it, you know, and she was singing that song of believing. And I know the first thing that God began to uh, press on to me is I was believing for a miracle for my son. And uh, that, that birthing of faith or that drawing of him toward me because of the need that situation caused me to press into God it was a pressing need that I was I couldn't take it any longer so sometimes at midnight in our lives and it may seem like this is a uh, um, very difficult time and it's, it's a dark time but God is able to reverse it even at midnight God is able to change it. And there's already some scriptures in the Bible talking about what God did at midnight. And it do, which do, did and is reversing the matter of the first man. So we're going to read, pray, and then go and read the scriptures in um, Romans, from Romans, the uh, fifth chapter, beginning at 12th verse down to verse 21, about God reversing it. He has reversed it. He's already, as he said in the, on Calvary Cross, it is finished. And so it's already reversed. We just got to lay hold and believe God for whatever situation that we're in, that God has already reversed it. Let us pray. Father, we thank and praise you for your abiding presence, Holy Spirit, for your word, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you for this uh, man this morning, O oh God, from on high. We thank you for your word, your bread, O oh God, for we thank and praise you for the bread of God. Realize that we do not live by a natural bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of your mouth. You're encouraging us this morning through the word to remember that you've already reversed it. And even at midnight, hallelujah, may it seem dark, but we thank and praise you that you've already given us the victory through Christ. We yield our body, soul, and spirit unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So Romans, the, the fifth chapter, beginning at the twelfth verse. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. So until the law, sin was in the world. And this is interesting. But sin is not imputed or charged where there is no law. So the law was given, which is the first four, five books, the Torah, was given by God to make sure that we understood sin. And I always think about um, uh, some people say, well, I really didn't know. And I don't really, uh, I, I, so how can I be, how do I know that was wrong? So when God put the law in, it says law was, uh, was given uh, so that sin, it says, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. So he brought the law in so that people can clearly, which is the Ten Commandments, all the laws of the Old Testament, and I was listening to um, the pastor yesterday. He was saying, but the end of the law is Christ Jesus. So when Christ came, grace and truth came. Grace and mercy came. Uh, he did not come to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. But before Christ came, the law was prevailing. From the time that God gave the commandments, the law was upon every single. Didn't it sit here? Through one man, the world, death came. So when law came, it was to every man, whether they knew the law or not. It still, they were charged. Like my husband was a police said, ignorance of the law was no excuse of the law. So even then, when the law came, it was for every creature. Okay, but let's go on to read um, Romans 5, verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned unto Adam to Moses. Even over them that had not sinned after the same similitudes of Adam's transgressions. 
who is the figure of him that was to come. So Adam was the figure of him that was to come. Adam was just a figure. And those who uh, had not sinned after the same manner of Adam. And Adam, the first Adam, according to the scriptures in Romans, was a figure of him that was to come. Clearly. So that means the first Adam was not the final product of the creation of man. Verse 15, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men. Judgment came upon all men by the offense of one to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. The law entered that the offense might be clearly understood or abound. But where sin abound, grace did much more abound. That is, that as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ has reversed it. Hallelujah. He has reversed what the first Adam did. And that takes us over to Exodus. We talk about at midnight how God reversed it. Hallelujah. Because remember, the first Adam was a foreshadowing or a type. He was not the final product. The first Adam was earthly. The second Adam was a quickening spirit. The, in the first Adam, all died. And in the second Adam, all, hallelujah, received him and made alive. So God reversed it. He reversed the sentence that was on mankind through the first Adam. And when Christ came, the second Adam, he reversed it. You know, I always talk about um, you, you, the man is sentenced to death, the execution, and he wants to have, you know, somebody to plead his case, and he wants them to, to be pardoned, to reverse it, reverse the sentence. Hallelujah. And this midnight goes back into the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter. You probably already know this. And if you don't, you're just new to the scriptures. Exodus talks about when God, first of all, the promise was made in the book of Genesis 3.15 when God told the serpent, he was talking to the serpent, that the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent and the serpent's seed will bruise the heel of the woman's seed. So God put a promise word in there when man, when the first Adam sinned, God put a promise word. And you, how many people know that when God says something, it coming to pass. And God already told him, what you have done in this garden, serpent, it is going to be reversed. You have caused man to sin, and you have uh, beguiled the woman. And they're still blaming the women. I mean, we're still blaming, you know, like the women. But anyway, we're going to go past that. We're going back to God used the woman who the serpent tried to use to uh, spoil the plans of God. God used the virgin and prophesied that a virgin will conceive and bear a son. A virgin 
who had never known a man. And we saw in the New Testament that was Mary. And uh, she was, through all those 40 and two generations, God watched over his word to bring that word to pass, to reverse what was done in the Garden of Eden. And we saw the God of Eden, he had told the serpent in verse 15, he told us, I will put enemy between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise. Her seed shall bruise thy head. Hallelujah. And thou shall bruise his heel. Hallelujah. And we saw that was a promise that God put to reverse what was done in the book of Genesis. Then God moved on to the book of Exodus. And God began to tell them, as he told Abraham, that your seed will be down there in Egypt for 400 years. They'll be in bondage. We know they were down there 430 years, but 30 of those years was not in bondage. 400 years was in bondage, and God said they're going to come out, hallelujah, from underneath their taskmaster with the wealth of Egypt. Hallelujah. Then God reversed it. Well, hallelujah. It made me think about Joseph what they, uh, when they sold his brother and sold him into slavery. And he was sold, hallelujah, went down into prison, sold as a servant, accused us. Anyway, it, what I'm excited about is God reversing what the enemy meant for evil, God reversing it for good. And that's why he said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you shall be condemned in the day. God reversing. And at midnight. And the reason that we can have the midnight, because it's at midnight, it talks about God in the 12th chapter. He began to tell them that he, they are to pick out a lamb, the 12th chapter of Exodus, and that they are to pick out the lamb, and they are going to take the blood of the lamb and put it on the doorpost, and they go into the, to, to, to their houses, and where the blood is applied, the death angel will pass over them. The angel of death will pass over them. Hallelujah. And all this was all a type or a similitude of the Lamb of God. As John says in the New Testament, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Now this here Lamb is in Exodus, was preventing the death angel from just killing the firstborn in those houses. And it says, um, he will pass through the land. This night, I will pass through the land. And that's what the 12th chapter of Exodus talks about, that God said he will pass through the, long, the land. And at midnight, the death angel went through Egypt, and wherever he saw the blood, he passed over that house. Hallelujah. He passed over that house. And then it went on to, I've been again, think about and tie this into the virgins in Matthews, which I tied into virgins into it because there's so many other scriptures that things that happen at midnight just before when it seems like it's the darkest time or it seems like uh things are just just terrible the bible says at midnight we saw paul and silas prayed and at midnight the earth the, uh, the bible said that the uh, prison shook and uh the, the gates of the, of the prison swung wide open at midnight. Hallelujah. And so sometimes when things, which we know with Paul and Silas, had been whipped, jailed, put up into a prison, and what happened? The chains fell off the prison. The prison doors opened all at midnight. But this is a talk about the virgins. The reason I want to tie the virgin is because that midnight call is going to come again. The midnight cry or the, or the death angel is going to come through the land again at midnight. And that's going to be the catching away of the bride of Christ. And we know it's tied in because I did a little video on the bride. And this is Matthew's the 25th chapter. That uh, as Jesus tell us in the scriptures that uh, talking about um, the thief comes. And if the, the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would be watching. So, but there is a time when it seems dark and it seems, and, and the midnight doesn't have to be a literal sun and moon. It could be when things are getting very, very dark. Just remember that God reversed what was done through the first Adam, promising the serpent in Genesis, showing us the Passover lamb in the book of Exodus. And letting us know that at midnight when the deaf angel was sent out to judge Egypt and to bring forth judgment when he saw the blood on the doorpost. Now the blood now, we don't have to put blood on our natural door, but we have to have the blood applied to our hearts. 
We have to have the blood of the Lamb of God. As John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sins of the world. Now the blood is applied by faith in, 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 in Jesus. As we read in Romans, If we confess the Lord Jesus Christ with our mouth, believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. And so now the blood is applied by faith. Believing in the crucifixion, the, the, first, the birth, the death, the resurrection of Christ. Believing in that he is the son of God. Believing that when he hung out on the cross, that he died for us. Believing and receiving him by faith that the blood of Christ will be applied to us in, in our hearts. And that's how we get to the point where it says in Matthews, we know that uh, we become new creatures in Christ by faith through grace if we believe. That's why it says in, in Romans that um, that this new uh, new birth is to as many as be, believe and as to as many as receive. Now, death was put upon all, but salvation is, has to be received by faith through grace. You have to re believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to receive the salvation the new birth, to receive the new life. You have to believe. Yes, the first Adam, everybody sinned. All have sinned. But in Romans, we just read that uh, justification and salvation is available for every man. But you have to believe. You have to, hallelujah, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and confess him with your mind. Ask him to cleanse you and to come in. And the reason is, is optional it's the same way when we go back to the first lamb. The first lamb was told to get a lamb. Moses slayed the lamb. The blood was there. Now, some people had the option of not putting the blood on their door. I'm not going to put no blood on my door. I ain't going to put no blood. I don't believe in that. I don't believe it. So I ain't going to put no blood on. And that night, when that angel passed by, he didn't see the blood. He went right in that house and killed the firstborn. So it's, that's why in Romans it's talking about, when we read in Romans the fifth chapter, it says he, he uh, justified many because many people are not going to believe. Just like the, back in the time of Egypt when it was important to apply the blood, I'm sure some people who didn't believe Moses said, this don't make any sense. This don't make any sense. I ain't put no blood on my door. I ain't going to put no lamb blood. But... That's the only way they were spared was because of the blood of that lamb. And that's what it comes down to now. It comes down to now is if the blood of Christ is applied to you, you personally, you can't put it on the door. Now it's the door of your heart. Now it's the door inside of you. Now it's your, uh, uh, he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open up. I will come in and sup with him. So God calls us and he knocks on the door. And so the time is going to come when the death angel is going to pass through the land again. Okay? And that's what we got in Matthew talking about the 25th chapter, verse 6. Talking about the death angel is going to come. And that's why it says, um, it says, uh, I'm going to read this part, the first verse of the 25th chapter. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet, went forth to meet the bridegroom. They went out to meet him, okay? Went out. A lot of people say, well, you know, uh, we don't believe in the rapture. We're waiting for the, for the manifestation of, of Jesus to come, and, and then he's going to be on the earth. Listen, the first call after the, the, the groom has gone, which is Christ, he's ascended. He descended and ascended. He's going to call out the bride. And it's with these virgins here are tied into that time when the, the bride and her companions will be up there called out it says and five of them were wise and five were foolish they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them the oil is the holy spirit now it's a shame to be over here waiting and chased virgin waiting for christ and did not get the holy ghost did not receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is a gift. Romans said it's, salvation is a gift. You have to ask. And it tells us in the scripture, 
You know how to give gifts unto your children. How much more will God give you the Holy Ghost if you ask him? Lord, fill me with your spirit. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And while the bridegroom, it says, the wise took all in their vessels with their lamps. Okay. The wise took oil. The oil is the Holy Ghost. And that's why a lot of times people talk about praying in tongues. The Holy Ghost brings the utterance of tongues. And he that speaks in tongues edifies himself. You build yourself up. And Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. Yes, in the public and with people, you would that you speak a, a language that people can understand so they can say amen. But if you're just talking to God, you can speak in tongues all you want. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than all of y'all because it builds up you. Okay? Okay. And, but it says here, now these wise virgins took their lamps and they took all. Hallelujah. And that's the purpose of spending time with God so that your cup can be can overflow. So you, it's hard to give out. As many times where people minister and labor, they are putting out. Virtue is going out. They are pouring out. They have to get take time out to be filled again. One baptism, many fillings. Hallelujah. It says, And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go you out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Your lamp, the light of God in you then went out. Apparently they had some lamp, some light before, but in time, time went on, or the things got dark. They did not replenish the oil. And we are at a midnight time right now. And some people, you got to be mindful that the oil is not running out of your lamp. My God. While we are waiting for the bridegroom, that hallelujah, that you are not depleting your oil. Of course, when you give out, because they said to the other wives, give us some of your oil. Now, it's up for everybody, just like the time of the, um, the uh, Passover lamb. Every house had to have their own lamb. And everybody inside that house was under that lamb. Now it's not about a house. It's about an individual. It's about us. Okay? So therefore we go. And we see many scriptures when we're looking to talk about at midnight. God reversed it. He reversed the sentence that was way back there on the first Adam. And it was done at midnight. It was done at midnight. In fact, it said when Jesus hung on the cross, it says that the sun refused to shine. It got dark, my God, reminding us in the spiritual realm, it was midnight on the earth. Look at the time when Christ was crucified. It said that the, the earth shook and the sun refused to shine. And the people said, truly, this is the son of God, because God was letting us know this is midnight. But God, the death of Christ was reversing it. He was reversing. Hallelujah. He was reversing the day. He was reversing the night. Hallelujah. He was reversing things. And so that's what we're talking today about. As I was listening to C.C. Weiner, believe for it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and he will reverse. He already reversed it. You just got to remember in Romans and it said he, it's to many. But you got to apply the blood. You got to apply the blood. You got to apply the blood to your heart and to your mind. It says, for as by one man offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace, those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Uh, therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, judgment came upon all men, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience shall many be made righteous. You have to apply the blood. The midnight blood. Hallelujah. And that blood was talking to us in Exodus, promised in Genesis, and manifested in the New Testament through Christ. And then he was hung on that cross and it, the whole, it says the sun refused to shine. It got dark. And there are going to be some dark times on this earth still too, but we don't have to be a part of that. We can walk in the light of the word. 
I pray that you this has been a blessing. God reversed it. He reversed it. And I pray that you have received him as the light in your heart and the light in you. Hallelujah. Don't be like those foolish versions whose oil went out. And at midnight, they didn't have no more oil. They didn't have no minds. Go ye out to men. They don't have no more oil in them. So this is not the time, even if it's getting dark, that you get your oil replenished. Get get the uh, God on the inside. Spend time. Hallelujah. Talking to Jesus himself. He's the one that gives us. As David said, he don't put my candle out. He's threatening them in Revelations. There's some things that they were doing. He's going to put the candle out. So we're praying. It's already been reversed. It's already, because Jesus said it's finished. So it's already been reversed. But that midnight, hallelujah, that lamb that was slain at midnight, the, la the lamb that was slain in the earth, the sun refused to shine, that is a key factor to God reversing it in your life. We want to continue to stay in the scriptures. I hope that this has been encouraged to you to realize don't let your lamp go out of oil because the time is going to come at midnight. Hallelujah. And it means the midnight of this world when it's getting really, really bad. He told him uh, the church in Phili uh, Phil uh, Philippians, church of Philippi. Wait, wait, wait. Phil excuse my words. The church of Philadelphia that he would keep them from the hour of temptation that will come upon to try all souls. There's going to be a time to try every soul on this earth. It's going to be dark. It's going to be a dark day. It's going to be a hard time. And you got to have the blood. I got to have the blood already applied. I got to already have the oil in me. It comes only through the Holy Spirit. So we pray that you encourage. Number one, it's time to really, we talked to before about um, being disturbed. Work on, it says, work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. And Lord had told me one time, save yourself from this untoward generation. Everybody ain't want to be saved. Some people ain't going to apply the blood. They're going to be like the foolish version and say, give me some, pray for me. When they can pray. And, and, and access is already, when the veil of the temple was rent, access was already open for everybody to come. It said everybody can come to God. Okay, so we pray that you encourage, push the like button. We're going to stay in the word and, and pray that the word will be in us. It said, hide the word in our heart, that we would abide in the word and the word would abide in us. We love you. God loves you. And we pray that this word has been a blessing. Um, at midnight, he reversed it. Christ reversed it. He reversed it. And we know it was dark because the earth is according to the scripture, the, the, the theologians. At the time he was crucified, the sun refused to shine. It was dark. And so we pray that you know, going back in the scriptures, you're tying that into the Passover lamb. And I hope to do one on um, just the rapture. There's so many scriptures about the rapture, so we'll be ready and watching for him to come. And so each individual now has to make sure that blood is applied to them. And just like um, it says back there, some people had the option. And we got the option now, whether or not the blood will be applied but the midnight cry is going to come. And we pray that you be caught up with him and that I be caught up with him. That's my intention, to be caught up in, 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 with a moment of twinkling on the eye. That we'll put on uh, this, uh, put off this mortal body and put on immortality. We pray that you be blessed. God loves you. He done proved that on Calvary Cross. And walk in victory in Jesus' name. Amen.